this sacred place. Help us to understand the need we have for one another, the need we have for you, Lord, and the need we have as a community. We ask that the Holy Spirit come into our church, open up our hearts and minds, and lead us in the path to righteousness for your name's sake. We do it in the name of our Lord and our Creator, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home. Amen. Amen. The one board asked me to continuously remind you about our um, rituals of friendship booklets. Could you please fill those out since we have so many new faces around? We ask that you fill these out. Rip the page out and set it on top, and then as the kids go down to Sunday school, they're going to collect them for us and have them in the back. So I appreciate you if you could do that for us. This morning we're going to talk about friendship and love and joy and peace through our Lord. So let me start this service out by saying, may our Lord and Creator Jesus Christ, peace and love be with you always. And also with you. Would you please rise as we sing the first hymn of the morning, They Know We Are Christians, in the little black books we're up on the screen. <laughs> significance of this commandment. It calls us to a deep, wholehearted love for you, our creator and sustainer. 
Help us to keep our focus on loving above all else. We pray for wisdom to know what it means to love with all that we are. May your love guide our hearts, our actions, and our choices. Grant us the grace to seek you in every aspect of our lives and to surrender our will to yours and to walk in obedience. We are aware of the challenges we face in our daily lives. So we ask for guidance in living out this commandment. Empower us to demonstrate our love for you through our relationships, our service, and our commitment to walking in faith. Father, we acknowledge that we all fall short, so we ask for forgiveness. Give us the courage to repent and to turn back to you, knowing that your love is always there, welcoming us. And now, as we meditate on these words of Jesus, we find a beautiful tran transformation in our hearts as we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For the first reading this morning, we'll have Jared Stockwell come forward. Know, dear brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not a failure. You know how badly we had been treated at Philippi just before we came to you and how much we suffered there. Yet our God gave us the courage to declare his good news to you boldly in spite of great opportunity. Opposition. So you can see we were not preaching with any deceit or impure motives or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you in the flattery as well as, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get money. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you. But instead, we were like children among you. Or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's goodness, but our own lives too. The word of God for the people of God. Now is the time in service where we bring up the celebrations in our lives. And I would like to celebrate Mr. Stockwell for his reading. Uh, it's not always easy to read in front of people, and today he brought his friends, and what a wonderful example that is, right? Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other joys or celebrations that need to be shared? Our choir. Our wonderful, beautiful choir. Thank you so much.
Easter, I have a celebration. We were at our daughter Teresa's last night for dinner. And they go to the church off of M20 by uh, Wisner. But their children are such so joy. They are bringing them up in the love of God. Amen. And what a the littlest one, she hasn't played the guitar in a while, but last year she got up in front of their congregation and did solo. And she did very well. I saw the video of it. Like, so. But just praise God. Praise God. Amen. The God. Amen. She lost God for a while. And through examples between her sister and her brother and myself, she came back to God. Amen. And it's just a joy. Oh, what a joy. What a joy. A young family growing up in the house of God. What a joy. Are there any other joys or concerns? Or, sorry, not joys or concerns. Sorry, celebrations to be shared. <laughs> I'm doing double duty today, so I'm kind of mixed up.
and all the law in the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Who, whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. And he said to them, how is it that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can this be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from the day did any more dare to ask him any more questions. Those are the words of God to the people of God. And we say, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So over the last six weeks or so, I've been preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, and he's facing oppositions from both the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he is thwarting all their questions that would get him thrown into jail and stop his ministry. So he's under attack, verbally, and they're trying to frame his ministry in certain ways to discredit him uh, from the public. It has been said that love may not make the world go round, but it sure makes the trip worthwhile. There was a French novelist who wrote, tell me whom you love, and I will tell you who you are. You see, it was Jesus who opened our eyes and showed us what true love is. And it is Jesus who tells us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself, and that all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, where I want to start is way back, all the way back to the beginning of time. When Genesis speaks to us about love, and the first thing we hear about love from the beginning is that God, in his love, created us, created humanity. What we can take from that is life does not go before love. Love has always come before life. In his love, God created you. In our text, Jesus is speaking of the three directions that love can take. Love towards God, love towards others, and love towards self. Our love for God must be the priority over everything else in life. Think about that statement. Love for God must take priority over everything. So what goes from that is that the amount of time you spend with God, being in God's presence, speaking with God in prayer, is a reflection that reflects your love for God. Right? When you love someone, you want to be around them, right? Constantly sharing and feeling that love. Why should we want anything less with God? Our lives should yearn to be in the presence. Sometimes I think we need to be reminded of just how important love is to us. How important giving love is. And not only to those who receive it, right, but also to those who give it. People of Christ, you are not living if you are not loving. It's time to start loving. Amen. The love of God is what gives us life. It's what gave us life in creation. The love of God is what sought us out and offered 
us salvation. Jesus taught that if we love, and if love is to be fully displayed, then we must love God first, others second, and ourselves last. Do you see how this speaks against our culture? Like our culture today would have that the other way around. And far too many of us have it completely backwards. But these scriptures speak with power. These scriptures speak with the truth. If we love God, then and only then will our love be completed. And this love for God causes us to love others and love for ourselves. In fact, if we love God the most, we can love others best. If we love God the most, we will love others best. I like the way C.S. Lewis put it when he said, when I have learned to love God better than my earthly dearest, I shall love my earthly dearest better than I do right now. Our love for God drives us to love others. But it can be hard. It can be difficult to love everyone all the time. Right? Sometimes people do things that just want us, make us want to cut them off. To get away from them. You don't want to be hurt any longer. And yes, love can hurt. I think there's been a song made about that, right? There was a couple who had a neighbor across the street who would not, for some reason, ever acknowledge that they existed. But that did not stop them from cheerfully saying every morning when they saw him, Hello! One day a little boy saw this and asked the couple, Why? Why do you even bother to say hi to that guy? He's never going to say hi back to you. He's never going to acknowledge you exist. Well, the couple answered, with no complaints and no reservations, because we are Christians. That is because we are called by God to love, even if that love is not returned in our direction. I'm sure many of you who have been in the church a long time have heard these words before. Make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Christ. Loving your neighbor is at the heart of making friends because you're not living if you're not loving. We are loved. We are loved and cherished by God, the one who created love itself. Jesus overcame hate, evil, and death through his act of love on the cross. Just think of how full your life could be if we all practice this kind of love with each other. I know it's, a, it's, it's the idea of a hopeless dreamer, right? No one's ever going to love everybody. Is that pastor a hippie? No, my hair's too short. <laughs> <laughs> but love is really the way. In his first letter, John tells us we love because God first loved us. We can love because God first loved us. There are two powerful yet easy steps that any one of us can take that will transform all the relationships in your life. Here's the first. When it comes to love, we need to say it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to verbalize it. We need to say it. We need to say it. We need to hear ourselves saying it. And we need to hear others say it. There was a little girl who was four years old. Her name was Martha. And she loved hugging all of her dolls. She would hold her little dolls in her arms 
And she looked up at her mom and said, Hey, Mom, I love them and love them and love them. But I don't think they love me back. I'm wondering if this could be our problem, right? God loves us and loves us and loves us, but we never seem to love him back. Or perhaps we never love him back the way he deserves. So when it comes to love, we need to say it. And the second principle is this. When it comes to love, we need to show it. We need to be active. Love must be voiced and it needs to be shown. In the great love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, Paul constantly tells us what love is. What love does, what love is not, and what love does not. Love is proactive, it is practical, and it is personal. Just a simple touch can mean so much. It can communicate a sense of love and encouragement and of acceptance. There was a study conducted at UCLA that found to maintain physical and emotional health, men and women both need eight to 10 meaningful touches every single day. These researchers defined it a meaningful touch as a gentle tap, a stroke, a kiss, a hug given by someone who is significant in their life, like a husband, wife, child, parent, friend, there was an old TV commercial when I was growing up, it was a drug commercial, but it said, have you hugged your children today? Does anybody remember that? Good advice, whether it's for drugs or not. Good coaches high-five their players. Good husbands hug their wives. It is about touch, it is about love. And good Christians embrace each other, smile with one another, laugh with each other. You're not loving, living if you're not loving. <clears throat> Love sets off a divine reaction that makes the world go round. Love is the spark that kindles the fire of compassion. Compassion is the fire that lights the candle of service. Service is the candle that ignites the torch of hope, and hope is the torch that lights the beacon of faith, and our faith reflects the power of God. And God is the one who created the miracle of love in the first place. Jesus tells us we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Now on the surface, that might seem like some mandate or self-love is a medication. But when we consider, but when we consider his words in the proper perspective, we see the, princ the principle that Jesus is giving us is both radically new and wonderfully invigorating. Jesus has declared that when you love God the way we ought to love God, we will love others the way we ought to love others. And when we love God and others as the scripture instructs us to do, we will find a peace and a love for ourselves. Jesus' first words in our gospel lesson today are, you shall love. It requires us to do something. You shall love. Evangeline Booth, the daughter and founder of uh, the man who started the Salvation Army, sat in the slums one morning, cleaning sores off of a drunk woman. And her friend came up to her and said, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. And she looked at her friend and replied, neither would I. That's the kind of love we're talking about this morning. As Christ followers, we need to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, 
to allow God to support us and uplift us, to become better at loving me, quite frankly. Allow God's love to flow through you to others. But this involves change. And it involves risk. You can be hurt. Christ tells us it was never going to be easy. But it can bring a tidal wave of joy that will wash and cleanse you down to your very soul. You see, the winter circle of life is drawn with the ink of God's love. So I ask you, do you know Jesus in this way? Is your passion for Christ bursting from your very soul? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbors as yourself. The command is clear. You shall love. How can we do anything else, right? How can we do otherwise? Because we know that when Christ touched your life, love becomes your natural response. Only those who have encountered Christ will preserve until the end and finish well. So I beg you this morning, passionately, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Passionately, love your neighbor as yourself. God knows your heart. God knows you want that kind of desire in your life. May each of us be on fire with that passion. A passion to love your God with all your heart, your soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love. Because you're not living if you're not loving. Amen. Let us rise now as we sing the next hymn of the morning. Number 170 in your hymnals are up on the screen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Your generosity is a testament 
to your love for the Lord. So let us give generously, following the example of our Savior, who loved us with all his heart, soul, and mind. Let us pray. Truest of all love, as we bring our offerings before you today, let us recognize that our giving is not just an act of generosity, but a demonstration of our commitment and love to you. We thank you for the resources you have entrusted to us. Now we offer them back in gratitude. May these gifts be used to further your kingdom and to show compassion to those in need and to share the message of hope and faith with the world. Bless these offerings, Lord, and multiply them for your glory. May they be used in ways that honor your name and fulfill your greatest commandment to love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Next up this morning, we have ministry opportunities. Are there any ministry opportunities this morning to share? The weather is going to be cold this week, and I have something to cure that for you. On Saturday night, we are having a chili cook-off. We're serving from 5 o'clock to 6.30. When you come in, we will give you instructions on how to sample the different types of chili and how to vote on them. And then after you have voted, then you can get a bowl of chili and cornbread and crackers. Um, at 6 o'clock, we will tally the votes, and the winner and the winner up will be awarded. And then um, there's also going to be cookies and brownies. For, the chili is by donation, and the cookies and brownies and those type of sweets are going to be donations <coughs> also. So come and warm yourself up Saturday night with a good bowl of chili. So I believe Jaina mentioned last week that whoever wins this chili cook-off gets to go to regionals. <laughs> <laughs> Um, November 19th, the youth group will partner with St. Joseph Catholic Church and do one after church, another chili cook-off. So we hope that you would like to join us there as well. And then um, I want to thank you all for your donations for the snack sales. We have lots of snacks, and so we don't need any more. We have two more sales. Um, little did I know girls' basketball does not run the same as boys' basketball. Um, so it's just a little bit different. There's less kids playing than what we thought that there would be. So thank you for your snacks, but we don't need any more at the moment. Um, and then we do still have popcorn buckets left for sale if anybody needs one. Um, we had some kids that weren't able to sell theirs. Thank you. Where is the cook-off at? So the one for this church, this Sunday, or this, this Saturday, Saturday, this upcoming yeah. Saturday is in the basement. Okay. And then November 19th, it'll be at the St. Joseph Catholic Church Hall. Oh, I forgot one more. Sorry. Okay. Um, we will be doing Christmas flowers. I will have the um, order forms in the bulletin for the next week. So CSI group. Okay. Sorry. I <laughs> with a lot of people. Um, the CSI group will be selling Christmas flowers. I need the orders in by the 19th, same day as the chili cook-off, and then they'll be delivered before Christmas. So watch for the order forms for that. Okay, one more. I would say that for the chili cook-off, those that show up, linger for an extra hour, help clean up, set your clock back, and you'll get to church on time the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> also, to follow up on yesterday, we gathered, uh, uh, 10 of us gathered with the United Methodist and United Methodist basement down in Nuevo, had breakfast, they had sausage and gravy, Such and pancakes, with or without Such blueberries, they had everything, three meats, whatever you, so it was much more enjoyed than the crow and humble pie I had last Sunday. <laughs> I'm apologizing that I announced the wrong one, but that was a wrap up on that one. Thank you. Are there any other ministry opportunities? Here. Um, I've taken over the greeting position from Doris. Thank you. And uh, my only request is please don't all rush me at once, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to do that, uh, I'd be happy to put you down. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. We appreciate that. I want you all to kind of understand, you probably haven't heard this since a member's class or some Bible study you've had, but a church is a very dynamic place. And it isn't just these walls and these buildings that uh, give back to the community. It is a dynamic people 
who have one love for God. We are a gathered, dynamic group of people who all have different opinions and different ideas. But you also have different calls from the Lord. So don't wait for your pastor or a church leader to come up to you and say, hey, do you mind doing this for the church? If you see a need, that's God speaking to you. Why not just handle it? Your call is going to be completely different than what other people believe. So why don't you give us that call? Help where you can. Be creative about it, right? If you are a person who is very welcoming, be a greeter. If you are a good speaker, be a liturgist. If you are a good lover, come with me to visit people. That's a skill. We need to be active in our faith, not reactive after we see a need. Go find that need. Fix it. Change somebody's life. And you will, you will be welcoming them into the, into the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's, that's the whole goal here. We are not a set of laws, a set of rules that hold us together. We are Christians who follow Christ, who share love together. That's what we are. That's what a church is. So be active in your love. I'm done preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you all to please rise to sing the last hymn of the morning. Love lifted me.